ARP protocol, the address resolution protocol is one of the very important protocols when it comes to networking. Why? Because this particular protocol makes sure that a device is able to talk to another device by mapping its IP address to its MAC address. But don't, don't get confused. We'll take a real life example just now and then we'll actually go into the workings of an ARP protocol at a basic level and by the end of this video, I hope you will be able to understand and explain ARP to anyone. So without further ado, let's get started. So taking a real life example, suppose there is this uh, service apartment or you know, this apartment has different houses, okay? And this is you and somewhere here, your friend uh, Mohan lives in, for example. And you know the name of this particular apartment, which is XYZ building or XYZ apartment. But you don't know at, what, at which particular floor or at which particular flat your friends lives in. And for that matter, just imagine we are not in the age of mobiles. Okay, so we are in the old era where we didn't had anything to directly communicate. So while you, you know, while you come here, you know that somewhere here you have your friend living but then you have no other option but just at the front gate you have to start shouting Mohan where are you? I am looking for you and then suddenly Mohan listens to his own name and being called by yourself and he comes to his window and say hey man I am here so basically this is what ARP also does. So for example, knowing that Mohan lives into uh, this particular building can be your IP address. IP address of Mohan or IP address of any machine. It is a logical address which is, uh, you know, which is there uh, at the source, aware at the source. But they do not know, the source does not know the actual build door number or the flat number which is the MAC address. And this particular whole service is being done by ARP, ARP protocol. So if you're conf confused as to what is a MAC address, MAC address is the physical address which gets baked into every machine, every laptop. Every, every laptop, for example, will have a NIC network interface card and that will define the MAC address of that particular laptop. So ARP does the same and now we'll understand how ARP does it. In a, in a very simple request and response model. So in this particular example, uh, you know, this particular guy requested John, uh, requested Mohan, for example, John is a very common name. So re requested Mohan, uh, shouted his name and then Mohan responded. In a similar way, ARP works. Let's understand how. So now let's understand how ARP works with this particular example. But before that, just refresh just refresh your basics from the OSI model lecture. If you have not seen it, please watch it because it explains you how the traffic flows through the seven layers of OSI. And if you don't remember the acronym which we created, the acronym is All People Should Try New Domino's Pizza. So we have to focus on new dominoes. Okay. All people should try new Domino's Pizza. Okay, so forget about these. Okay, these are application, presentation, session, transport. This is your network layer. Okay, where the IP address get attached to a data packet and then it goes to the next which is the data link. And data link is the place where the packet converts into a frame and this particular frame will, ha will have to have, you know, a MAC attached in the packet in the data packet so you will have the source ip and the source mac and then you have to have a destination iv and a de destination mac address okay so understand this and then this is the physical where the you know traffic uh, grow, goes through the wire so take for example this particular lan this is a local area network for sales department and device one okay device one uh, wants to communicate to device three so there is a concept of ARP cache wherein every device will maintain the ARP cache in terms of a mapping of IP address and corresponding MAC address. But in 
to simplify the understanding we will assume there is no cache anywhere neither here nor there neither at the router there is no cache there is no existing existence of previous arp data so it's a complete complete first time uh, communication which is happening so device one wants to send data to device three so it has the ip address of device three but it does not know it does not know its mac address so first thing which device one will do is it will send a arp request within this particular network and how it knew that this is within the network using the subnet mask okay so subnet mask help you to understand whether this particular you know device and this particular device is within the same network or not so because it is in the same network device one could directly you know talk to device three or maybe there could be a switch in between but for simplicity sake just imagine that device one could directly talk to device three okay so it will send the arp request which would be a broadcast message broadcast message would be shouting to everyone hey i want to send this packet to this particular ip address x dot y dot z dot a who whoever has this ip address can you tell me your mac address so it will be sent to device 2 device 3 maybe some other device as well and then device 3 will respond with a unicast message broadcast is when one device sends uh, you know sends uh, a message to everyone in that network and unicast is when you simply talk to one particular device so d3 will understand that it has come from d1 the request so it will say hey i am here i have this particular mac address can you send the data to me and it will be sent directly back to d1 it will be a unicast message so within the lan arp protocol works like this the arp request will be broadcast as and then d3 device will send the arp response once the arp response is given the d1 device will attach the mac address into that particular frame and send it over now things will change a bit in the scenario 2 when d for example when d2 wants to talk to d6 because now this network is different and this network is different and as you know the basics one device in one network cannot directly talk to another device so suppose if d2 has you know has to send something to d6 it won't have it okay it won't have it it will only have the ip address ip address of d6 device so what it will do it will now because it understand using the subnet mask that okay this is a different network it will directly go to the default gateway and it will broadcast now the broadcast will happen but this time what d2 device will ask hey i want to send this packet to this particular ip address can i get the mac address mac address of the default gateway now this is something we have to pay attention because we are traversing through the network the thing which d2 knows very clearly is that this is the only place from which we have the doorway to outside networks okay and that's why the best thing which d2 could do in its own capacity is to send this particular frame or send this particular data packet to the gateway so what it will happen is router or the default gateway will respond unicastly like how we did in d1 and d3 scenario same thing will happen and then it will send the mac address of its own gateways mac address d2 device will attach the mac address of this particular gateway and send the packet to the gateway now when the gateway receives the packet or receives the frame this particular gateway will know that okay now i have to find out where is d6 in this particular network and considering we don't have any caching yet it will again do a broadcast boss this is the ip address i have got this is my mac address i want to know the mac address of d6 device and d6 will respond back to the gateway with its mac address router or the default gateway will take that uh, uh, you know uh, mac address attach it and send it back to d2 so once d6 responds back with its mac address 
to the default gateway the frame which it has okay the frame which is now with the default gateway default gateway will attach the mac in this particular frame for d6 mac address of d6 and send it to d6 so it will attach its uh, you know its mac address source mac address source ip destination mac address destination ip so when we are traversing through the network this is how arp works and obviously once arp request and response has been completed there is something which is called as arp cache arp cache what it does is it uh, you know every device maintains it maintains its own table mapping of ip address versus mac address so that the next time round we are not wasting time in this and we are directly going to that particular device because it is only the first time when we need to know the mac address for the, all the subsequent communication we already have the arp table so this is the basic working of arp there are some advanced workings of arp as well but the idea is simple we have to understand arp protocol how exactly it works and i hope you now know a bit about arp let me know how uh, interesting it was for you did you learn something do you want to learn something more in networking there is a whole playlist which we have on networking where we have uh, worked on different concepts one by one so do check it out if you have any other topic do let me know and i'll try to make videos on that topic as well we don't make videos just on networking we make videos on carrier we make videos on all the latest technologies data ai machine learning chat gpt anything to do with it industry it ke funde channel is meant for that so if you have any specific request do let me know because your suggestions means a lot to me it gives me clarity as to what i need to work on what i need to learn next so with that said guys i hope you like this video if you did please hit the like button subscribe bell icon and uh, until next time keep learning keep sharing all your knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now